Let's talk about wrist wraps. I'm Phil Meggers here at Testify Strength and Conditioning in Omaha, Nebraska, and we're gonna talk about wrist wraps. We're gonna talk about what they are, why you might wanna use them, when you might wanna use them, and how to use them. Let's begin with the what. What are wrist straps? This is your basic wrist strap. It's got a thumb loop at one end, it's got the elastic body of the wrap, and it's got a Velcro closure system at the other end. These wraps are manufactured by Chic. I believe they actually belong to one of our members here at Testify, so uh, Testify people, if you're looking for your wraps, we might have them, somebody left these behind. Similar wrap here, again, most of these are about the same. This one's manufactured by Rogue, these are my wife's wraps, thumb loop at one end, elastic body of the wrap, and then a Velcro closure system at the other end. Again, this is the 18 inch wrap. I believe all these are 18 inch wraps. I probably wouldn't go less than 18 inches, although your mileage may vary. Uh, you could go more than 18 inches. There are a number of companies that will make longer wraps. Uh, SPD comes to mind. SPD also makes a stiffer and a more flexible variety, which might be kind of nice. But again, the design is not particularly complicated. A whole bunch of companies out there will make a wrist wrap that will work just fine for your purposes. Why might you want to use a wrist strap? You might want to use a wrist strap when your wrist is in compression. A wrist strap acts by giving support to the wrist. It acts as an external skeleton or a cast or a belt, if you will. Since it's wrapped around the wrist, it lends support to the wrist and it makes it very difficult to place that wrist in excessive amounts of extension. So some compressive situations uh, that involve the wrist where you might want to wear a wrist wrap would involve the press, that is to say the overhead press, the bench press, really all of the pressing motions. If you've got a history of wrist injuries or currently have a wrist injury, I'd probably recommend wearing a wrist wrap. If you squat with your thumbs wrapped around the bar and your wrists in extension, I would certainly recommend wearing a wrist wrap. If you are an Olympic lifter, a lot of weightlifters or Olympic lifters will wear wrist straps. If you think about the snatch, the snatch is a lift that starts off with the wrist in tension. The bar is sitting on the floor, you're pulling it off of the floor, and generally speaking, wrist straps are useless for pulling motions. However, the snatch finishes in a situation overhead. It finishes with the wrist in compression, and for that reason, a wrist wrap can be very useful uh, for the Olympic lifts. Likewise, the jerk, it finishes overhead in compression. To a certain extent, a wrist strap can be very useful for the clean as well. These are all situations where a wrist strap would be useful. When should you put on your wrist straps? A reasonable approach is to treat your wrist straps like your belt. So go ahead and put on your wrist straps for your last warm up as well as all of your work sets. You don't need your wrist straps on for the empty bar, you don't need your wrist straps on for the lighter warm ups. Remember, the wrap is a tool, it's not supposed to be a crutch. Don't use the wrap to mask a problem that needs fixing. What I mean by that is, let's talk about the press for a moment, the overhead press, if you will. When you unrack a press, you should unrack a press with relatively neutral wrists. If you're unracking a press like this, and your wrists are in pretty severe extension there, and we're talking about the empty bar here, that's a problem that needs fixing. And that, that, that fix does not come from the wrap. That fix comes from the lifter. We need to learn how to unrack the bar with relatively straight wrists. You should be able to press the empty bar and most of your warm-ups with relatively straight wrists without the aid of a wrap. Um, with time and experience, you're going to discover whether or not you want to wear the wraps a little bit, perhaps earlier than your last warm-up. But again, the wrap is not supposed to cover up a problem that's, that needs fixing. It's a tool, it's not a crutch. How do you put on a wrist wrap? Well, this is not a particularly complicated process, but people get it wrong more often than you might think. So let's take a look at this. Remember, it's a wrist wrap. It's not a forearm wrap. It's not a hand wrap, it's a wrist wrap, so make sure that you wear it around the wrist. Here's a reasonable approach. This would be, if you put your wrist wrap on the way that I'm teaching in this video, this would be the right wrist wrap. So you're gonna place your thumb through the thumb loop. You're gonna place the wrist wrap over the back of the wrist here. 
And I'm gonna line up this black line, this tiny little black line going down the middle of this wrap. I'm gonna line it up on this bony projection on my wrist right here. I don't know if you can see it from there, but you can find that bony projection on your own wrist. This is called the styloid process of the ulna. The name doesn't matter that much, the location does. A reasonable approach is to place that center line right on that styloid process, maybe just a little bit higher um, towards the hand from there. But this is a good start. From there, you're gonna apply a little bit of tension and keep applying the wrap around the wrist. Close it off with the Velcro closure and take the thumb loop off. Once this wrap is on, if it's on fairly snugly, you'll notice that the wrist wrap immediately provides support to the wrist. It's harder to extend the wrist. It's also harder to flex the wrist. So the wrap is doing its job. It's acting as that, that external skeleton or that belt from the wrist. How tight should you wear the wrist wrap? It's gonna be pretty darn tight. It is not going to be so tight that you start losing circulation to your fingers, to your hand, the moment you put it on, but it should be snug enough to provide support. And snug enough to provide support means it's gonna be tight enough that you don't wanna wear it in between sets. You're gonna to wanna to take it off in between sets, or at the very least, you're gonna to wanna to loosen it in between sets. Which brings up another way of putting the wrap on. Once you've put the wrap on the first time, uh, Olympic lifters will do this quite a bit, so you put the wrap on the first time. Um, let's say you've done a clean and jerk or you've done a press, um, thumb loops off, you're done with that. You can simply loosen it a little bit. You don't actually have to take off the whole wrap. And then when you're ready to put it back on again, you can simply tuck the thumb loop in between your forefinger and your thumb and use that as the anchor. That's the only purpose of the thumb loop anyway. It's just an anchor to be used while putting the wrap on so the wrap doesn't just keep spinning around your wrist. Once you've got that thumb loop pinched in between your forefinger and your thumb, you can simply re-tighten the wrap and put it back on again. Well, I think that pretty much wraps things up on this topic. Remember, the wrap is a tool. It's not a crutch, so don't use it as a crutch. Don't use it to mask a problem that needs to be fixed. For instance, on the press, you're not gonna use your wraps on your empty bar warmups. You're not gonna use your wraps on your lighter warmups because these are weights where you should be able to maintain relatively straight, neutral wrists. But when the weight gets heavy, when it's appropriate, you might just find that the wrap is a very useful tool. And I hope that this video helps you use it effectively.